Hey everybody, it's Peter from Brantford Kia and we are live and we are in our, what will be become our video bay. So what I'm gonna do is show you briefly around here just for a second. This is an unfinished area right now, as you can tell. And you can see we've still got a lot to go under construction. If we look up, there are no lights up here. We are very much in a construction zone, but our construction team has left us. And uh, because of the COVID-19 uh, era that we're in, we will be doing some videos in here. So we're gonna be doing some live videos. We, uh, this eventually was going to become our video bay, but uh, as of now, the construction's on hold and I'm still gonna use it, even though, like I said, there's no lights up there. We are working in a construction zone, but there's nobody here but me. So part of our sort of isolation that's going on is uh, you will find that we will be doing these videos live probably every afternoon or many afternoons. Um, at this point, we're going to go with around 2 o'clock in the afternoon. We may uh, see how that goes, 2 o'clock Eastern time. So we're going to talk about this car in a second, but because I'm working alone, what I'm going to do is I have my laptop up here. I just need to bear with me for a second. I'm going to refresh my page. And that is going to allow me to see some comments that you guys are giving because I can see the comments on the um, screen, but they do disappear very quickly. So there's me. And uh, if I need to, I will set the camera down right here, which I'm just going to give a quick test right now. We can do that. And I believe if I do this correctly, maybe, maybe, yes, you can still see me. So I'm a little bit delayed on my uh, video feed. Anyways, I am here and I am alone. And what we're gonna do is a live video walk around of this Forte 5 GT. Now this is a car that Americans don't have, I believe. Uh, we've had, we did a video like this with the Celtos just the other day, a live video. We got some criticism about how shaky it was. We fixed that with a steady cam that I'm holding right now. And uh, we'll do our best with the audio. Again, we are working in different times like all of you are. And uh, this is my isolation bay for the next half an hour, 20 minutes. We'll see how this goes. If you have questions, that's what I'm looking for. The reason we're going to do some live videos is to throw stuff out there. So right now, we're going to dig into the 2020 Kia Forte 5 GT. So right off the bat, this is one of my favorite cars. Uh, let me see if I have the key on me. I think I do. No, that's my key. This is something I should have prepared for. Oh, you know what? I don't have the key at all here. I'm going to have to sort that out. Anyways. Big problem. You know what? You guys can wait with me while we're building comments. I will be right back because I need to get that key. It's in the other room and uh, bear with me while we're uh, getting some people here. I promise I'll be back in less than 30 seconds. Video error number one, always have the key on your hand. So uh, give me a like on this video if you're laughing at me right now because I forgot the key. So the reason I want the key is one or a number of things. First of all, I can um, actually do things with the car with the key, but the key has been redesigned on a lot of our Kias. So again, I'm working in an area with no light, so I'm gonna try to get into the daylight here. This is the new Kia key, and I like it because all the keys are on the side. So a lot of you have seen these uh, keys before because uh, we do something similar with the Stinger. This is what we're doing with all our cars. The reason I think it's better is we used to put our keys on this or our buttons on this side here. We don't do that anymore and they're harder to hit when they're in your pocket. So kudos to Kia there. There's a little light there when I lock it and unlock it. You might have seen that beep there. So uh, good job on the key. All right, this car, let's take a look at it from front to back. The GT in Canada has the 1.6 liter turbo engine. It is 109 or 201 horsepower, 195 foot pounds of torque. That is the same engine as the top of the line Kia Seltos. The difference in the Forte 5 is the Forte 5 GT. It has more, um, it has more um, horsepower than in the Seltos. And the reason they do that with the Seltos is to help the Seltos with fuel economy. Somebody asked, is there auto start? On the Seltos, there will be on this level trim. On this car, there is not, although there is through UVO Intelligence. So we're gonna talk about UVO Intelligence a little bit later. A couple things I like, we're gonna start, uh, we're gonna talk about the trunk in a second. Um, I really like the styling. The former Forte 5 had a shortened rear deck lid area. So it was kind of a short trunk. We're gonna talk about the practicality of the trunk in a second. Uh, it's really, really good. 
This is the top of the line model. So this has everything on it. And uh, I think that what we'll do is we'll start, actually, you know what, why don't we start with the trunk? Maybe we can show some lighting while we're at it here because it is a dimmer area. Um, let's see if I can turn on. Bear with me, I'm gonna try not to hit my camera rig here. I don't wanna start the car and uh, flood everybody out, but I will. I should mention we are on a short, a very uh, short staff here. We are still open for business. We are allowed to be open. Our local government does allow us to be open. But in the respect of social distancing, we are very, very limited in our staff. Uh, you may hear me answering the phone sometimes. You may see me doing other things. One of the things I love about this car is the lighting. So it's got LED lights all around. And I'm going to see if I can show you. They're hard to film. So the headlights, of course, extremely bright. When I get right in there, you'll see that. But uh, you may see some flickering, yeah. So those uh, X lights, they're flickering there a little bit slowly. Those are LED lights as well. And they give it a really sharp view from a long ways away when it's coming. Now with the headlights on, you can see those bright LED lights are there as well. I'm gonna get over one of the controversial things about this car. There is a spot for fog lights down there. They don't have them. These LED lights are really bright. If you stuck halogen fog lights down there, they wouldn't be seen. The new Nero, the 2020 Nero PHEV, actually has LED fog lights, which we haven't done before that I know of. Uh, at least not the round singular ones. The, the Soul has got three, the Telluride, other stuff. So this one does not have fog lights yet. I think it's the one thing they could add, but good job on Kia for putting LED lights in the front. All right, we're gonna go around the back. I'm gonna show you these lights as well. He is doing a really good job with what I call the sort of the jewelry of the car. And again, sometimes LED lights flicker in uh, video. It looks like they're okay right now, but these lights look really cool. So a lot of times you guys ask me to do a um, Forte at night video. Uh, this is, actually we have done a Forte at night video before. That's what they look like. All right, hopping in. First of all, keyless entry. That means when you press that button, the door unlocks. We've already done that. We're gonna show you some of the features in here. I do wanna work my way to the trunk area and show you some of that stuff as well there. All right, one of the things I love about this car, really clean, easy to read uh, area here. So I'll show you some of the stuff in the center of the dash. Um, center of the dash, tachometer on the left, speedometer on the right, fuel gauge, temperature gauge, very clear, easy to read. Like I said, that screen in the middle is very high resolution. So very uh, nice, clean um, system there. We're gonna talk about drive modes in a second because I think that's interesting. Transmission temperature is different on this car. Uh, they don't show that on every car. And of course, this is a sport oriented model. We're gonna talk about suspension, lots of things in this video. Okay, over here, this is our audio system. So we are still using the eight inch screen in this car, not the 10 and a quarter inch screen, but that's okay. This is kind of the do everything radio. You can see it's got Sirius satellite radio up there. Uh, you've got a clock. You've also got navigation. The nav card is currently not in. I just peeled the plastic off of this car. So this car is brand, brand new and uh, it has not been fully PDI'd or anything else, but uh, you do have some cool things in here. Sometimes we don't go through the menus and uh, Apple CarPlay, Android Auto, that's sort of standard stuff in any of our big screen cars now, so uh, that's to be expected. We'll do a video on those later as well. One cool little thing that a lot of people don't know, voice memo. You can just, uh, if you're driving down and you're thinking something, even if you forget your phone or it's not with you, you can do a voice memo right through, uh, right through the car. So that's kind of cool. Scrolling down here, I'm gonna turn on auto and I'm gonna turn the fan down. This is an automatic climate control. So Kia does this, these really well. Um, Simple and easy to use. You can see it's a dual zone system, so I can change the passenger side to different than the driver's side. I can sync them up as well. Uh, easy to read, simple to use, and um, clear what's going on. I think that's really important with a lot of people. Uh, their auto systems can be really complicated. Now, let's see if I can get some light in the car. I'll open the sunroof vent. Don't know if I'll be able to show you this very well. There is a space right there, right up here. That is where you can store your cell phone. On this car, it's wireless charging. So you can throw your cell phone there. If it has wireless charging, you can wirelessly charge. Down here is where you can store the rest of your stuff. And of course you can plug in, there's two 12 volt port, sorry, excuse me, one 12 volt port and an extra USB port. The center USB port there, so the one in the center of the dash, is used for Apple CarPlay, Android Auto. All right, let's talk transmissions. I don't know if I can get to focus on, there we go. There we go, I'm trying to get the letters focused in there. So it is an automatic transmission. Um, I know that the Americans, they don't get the Forte 5 GT, they do get the Forte GT. 
You guys have the option of an automatic transmission. In Canada, we don't have that. We just have, or sorry, you guys have a standard transmission as an option. We just have an automatic transmission. I can't fix that, so don't complain about me. Just keep in mind, we don't buy them if you're in Canada. That's the reason we don't see them as much. This is a fantastic sports suspension, though. What it does is it is a um, dual-clutch transmission, so it's a seven-speed dual-clutch. They used to use this in the... In the um, Soul Turbo that we had, the previous generation, and it's a quick shifting, uh, excellent transmission. And of course, it's instantly in the next gear before you switch gears. And of course, if you want, you put it in drive, you tap it to the side, and you can shift up or down. And of course, as soon as I shift it to the side there, I'll do that one more time. Normal mode, sport mode. We're gonna talk about drive modes in a second, but you can sort of see the uh, how that displays on the screen there. The other thing you can do to shift the car is it does have paddle shifters. We'll talk about that in a second. Actually, you know what? Why don't we talk about drive modes while we're looking at it? So, drive modes. We're going to look in the dash here as I switch them. Who's expecting an eco mode? Thumbs up if you expect an eco mode. Anybody? There is no more eco mode. What we have now is normal, sport, and smart. So here's the thing. Eco mode in the past, sometimes people didn't like it because if you're getting on the highway or something, the car would intentionally feel sluggish. It would fight you to uh, downshift. And now what we do is we have no more eco mode, but smart mode puts it in the eco. You can see it says smart eco when I have it in the drive mode there. Hard to focus there, but that is what it says. And uh, of course, if you do the smart eco like that, it'll stay in eco. And you can see on the bottom, it says economical and aggressive. As you start driving more economical, there is a bar graph that will move to the economical side when you're driving economical, aggressive side when you're driving a little more sporty. As you move to the more aggressive side, you end up with the car switching out of the eco mode into a more uh, sport mode, including right up to the sport mode. So kind of a cool system. I don't know why you would drive in normal anymore because the smart mode is so good. And uh, of course you can just put it in manual shift as well. And there's your paddle shifter there, paddle shifter there as well on the steering wheel. So very cool system. And of course, uh, that can be done with the drive mode here. Somebody's asking me, what is the motor in the car? Yes, the 1.6 turbo is the motor. 201 horsepower, 195 foot-pounds of torque in this car. Same as the new Seltos, but the Seltos has a little less power. And the reason they do that less power in the Seltos is just to get a little bit better fuel economy out of that car. It's a little bit bigger. In Canada, we have rump roasters, heated seats in the front and ventilated seats. A lot of Americans don't uh, are surprised to see some of those uh, features in the Canadian cars. We are very well equipped here. So both front and driver, passenger and driver seat have heated and ventilated seats. I'm going to show you the steering wheel as well while we go through here. All of our steering wheels, cruise controls on this side here. This car you have the menu controls that control that center dash display. And down here, this indicates that the car has smart cruise control. If you've never used smart cruise control, somebody asked me this morning if we could do a video on that, and I think we will do a video on that later. Um, smart cruise control is fantastic in uh, traffic, and this is, of course, smart cruise control with stop and go. If you don't know what that is, the short story is it can keep a distance from the car in front of you, even if you have it on cruise control. So let's say I set the cruise for 100 kilometers an hour. If a car cuts, comes out in front of me at 90 kilometers an hour, the car will slow down, and it will show me in the dash. I don't think I can show it without the... Uh, yeah, it will show me in the dash uh, the distance that I have set between the preset distance it'll keep its distance from the car in front of you and in stop and go traffic it works very well as well if the car is equipped with smart cruise with stop and go left side steering wheel is all your buttons for your audio system I should try to get the headlights in there you can see it's set to auto I've turned them on for now back to auto it is dark enough they are on here I don't know if I can show you the ambient lighting so let's just see ambient lighting brightness I'm going to turn it to full brightness it is okay um, and then we'll just do the color. Let's see if we can change it to Red's fairly easy to see I think yeah, I don't think it'll quite show there is a red line around there That is part of the ambient lighting. Why don't I just show you to prove it? We'll go to blue here. So there's red I switch it to a blue you saw it sort of come through purple as it got there Violet and you can also link it to the drive mode. So right now I'm gonna link it to the drive mode You can see it's kind of that group uh, blue color I switch the drive mode, it goes to like a green color, which is really having trouble being picked up on the camera. And there's the sport mode there. So there is some ambient lighting in there as well as in the doors and other areas. Uh, it's gonna be not quite dark enough to show you in here. All right, we're gonna hop out of the car for a second. I'm gonna turn, the, whoops, I started the car. We don't wanna do that. I'm gonna turn the car off again. All right, I'm gonna hop out of the car. A couple things I wanna show you about the seats in this car. They are leather. The GT has a D-cut steering wheel, which looks like this right there with the GT logo. You've got red stitching across there and it's got a little bit of perforation type design in the side. That's all echoed right here in the seats. So if we scroll down the seats there, you can see perforations there. 
There is a red piping and a red stitching in the seat. And they are a little bit longer right over here. And what that does is get, make it really comfortable. These are excellent sports seats. And I should probably mention the drive of this car. People call it the baby stinger. It really is. It's kind of that perfectly balanced car. You can see the power seats there. It really, really is good for being a, um, just a real balanced vehicle. Somebody's gonna ask me what these are here. Those are just the uh, sponges that come on the side of the door when the car is brand new. Uh, I peeled the plastic on this car. It hasn't been through our shop yet. Just fully unlock the car here. Rear seats, same idea. You've got uh, a perforated uh, seats there. Of course, they're not ventilated in the back here, but they are, if I can show you over here, they are heated as well. So two levels of seat heating. It's just the base of the seat that's heated there. One little thing people always ask me about, there's plastic on the back right here. I think that's brilliant. Not this plastic, that's the wrapping plastic, but this is a plastic panel. This is sort of that leather uh, feel. I don't believe it's real. It is pretty sure it's not real leather. Forgive me if I'm wrong on that. Anyways, that plastic is great if you have kids, keeps kids from sort of scratching it up. All right, I wanna show you the trunk on this car because this trunk is almost, we're talking within a half a cubic foot of being the same size as a Kia Celto. So when you talk about practical smaller vehicles, if you don't need all wheel drive, but you do want something fun to drive, this car may be something you consider if you're looking at the Celtos. So we've got the floor mats in there. You can see it's a little bit dark in here. Again, I'm working just so you don't, if you joined us late, I am working in our future video bay, which is currently under construction, but because of the COVID-19 stuff, they're not coming in. So I'm gonna make use of it. We're gonna do live videos every day from this uh, construction site. Anyways, as I open the trunk here, floor mats are sitting there. You'll see a little handle here. And on the cover, you'll see a little hook there. A couple things you can do with these. You'll see another little handle there. Hey, Dave Hamill's here. Hey, Pete. Hey, Dave. All right, you can see the side of the, uh, you can lift this up like that and store something like an umbrella in there. You can come over this side here, lift that side up. I don't know if we can show it very clearly. There we go, some light in there. There's some straps in there as well. There, also that pink bag right there is a cargo net. So you can strap things down if you're driving athletically. Now I wanna show you what the trunk does. You lift right here. As we lift that up, it's a little bit tough to do with one hand here. I'm gonna show you what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna hook that loop in and I've got the key in my hand, which I should probably have put down by now. Okay, I'm trying to look through the camera, but I'm just gonna look through my own eyes. There we go. Hook that up there. And what that does is gives you access to the underfloor storage so you can load things in and out without having to hold that up. I'm gonna put the key in my pocket. Underneath the underfloor storage, you have more storage again, which you can use to fit even more things. So the trunk in this car, and when I say underfloor storage, there's a lot of it there. I should probably get a better flashlight or something on here. I wonder if I could turn the flash on, probably can't. Anyways, that trunk is amazing in this car because you have a ton of practical space. You can fold the seats down, you can take that upper panel off, but you can also fit a ton of stuff under the seat. And if you're a little bit shorter, uh, can we get the light to adjust here? There we go. There is a handle on the inside here, which you can reach easily, throw that down. While we're at the back of the car, let's talk performance. Practicality is great, but performance. This car has a dual exhaust. Now again, we've used this engine and transmission combination in the past, but what we didn't do with it is we didn't put the exhaust note that is on this car. This car has the best exhaust note that we have out of any car. Uh, we did do another video, uh, Actually, I think the best one to hear the exhaust note is our Forte, or sorry, our Forte GT video. You can see that on our YouTube channel a little bit later if you want. Um, the Forte GT, we do show the exhaust note right at the beginning of the car, of the, of the video. And the other thing I should point out here is the suspension in the rear. Excuse me for jerking around the camera a little bit there. The suspension in the rear of this car is different than the regular Forte. So it's not just a little bit more power, better sound. You also get an independent rear suspension. It's a totally different suspension in the rear and it's very, very good for handling. It just keeps everything really, really nice and in line. So that is overview. Sweet wheels, Dave Hamill says. Yeah, why don't we show the wheels? We'll show them here on the light side of the car where I've got some natural light. Key logo's upside down, of course. Hey, we're not the auto show here. So those wheels are, let's see, I believe they're 18, yes. 225, 40, 18 uh, tires on nice rims, sort of a dark and light. And that red indicator on the center is sort of the hint that this is top of the line. This is our top uh, vehicle. And that red, of course, echoes in the dash here, or sorry, in the grill here. And of course, throughout the car. So let me see if I can get you. Now keep in mind, I'm working very short staff. We haven't detailed this car up at all. 
You can see the sort of red detail there. I think it looks really sharp. It's the kind of thing you don't see from a distance, but as you get close, it kind of hints at the performance of this car. Very cool for me. Top line of the car, you also have the black uh, mirror caps as opposed to the body color. So that's another hint that this is the top line. You have the sunroof up top there. And signal lights are down low in that black, gloss black uh, trim. And you also have the diffuser down low as well. So that's the basics of the 2020 Kia Forte 5. This is our first uh, live video in our new video bay. And we're gonna probably continue to do these. So if you have suggestions of what, what cars you wanna see, let me know. We've got a pretty full selection out there. Some people are asking about the Stinger sitting right outside there. That's a possibility. We can do that maybe. Um, I think we might do Telluride. We'll do a whole bunch of stuff. We're gonna get even down to the basic Rio in here. Uh, if you're interested in seeing more of this, let's see if we can spin this camera around. Hey, look at that, we can. If you're interested in seeing more live videos, let me know. It's, um, it's just me out here in the video base, so I don't know if that's what you want to see. But uh, we'd like to do more of these during this COVID-19. Uh, this is where they're sticking me for a while, and uh, I'd be happy to help. I'm really, let me just see if I missed anything that you asked here. One six turbo is what you asked. Uh, you own three Kias. Wow. And they're all terrific. They really are. Auto start. I think we did cover that. Oh, Uvo Intelligence is something we should really quickly talk about. So let me show you. Flip the camera around again. If we can do that, there we go, there we go. So in Canada, we have what's called Uvo Intelligence. And on this car, you're gonna see that on the mirror. I don't know if I have enough light. Let's see if I can try to light it up a little bit. Maybe not, there we go. There are three buttons on the mirrors. That is part of an app as well. And I would pull out my phone, except my phone's filming right now to show you that app. Uh, that does give you remote start. Right now it's three years of, um, of like no charge service on that app. So you can do all kinds of things. You can locate your car, lock your car, unlock your car, start the car from that. And of course, those buttons on the dash also give you some extra navigational help, um, roadside assistance, those kinds of things. So this car, you can remote start it through the app on your phone. There we go, everybody. This is the Forte 5 GT. We're about 22 minutes in, so if anybody has any questions, now's a great time to ask them. Otherwise, you can ask me in the comments later, and we will be back tomorrow I want to thank everybody for watching. I'll give you another couple seconds here in case you do want to write something. And uh, give me a little thumbs up for working in our little uh, under construction studio here. Everybody who's uh, dealing with sort of isolation or working from home in the COVID-19, I hear you. These are the compromises we make and this is why I'm in here today. I uh, hope everybody's keeping safe. If you're doing business with us, I just want everybody to know we are taking every precaution possible. We are allowed to be open right now. Uh, we are very limited staff. We ask that you just give us a call before you stop by. And um, if you can give us a call, we can explain to you our processes and everything that we're doing to keep you safe, to keep our staff safe. And uh, our big thing right now is if you need a car, if you want to lower your payments, if you want to, uh, if you need a car for any reason, we're still here to help. We feel like there's a reason to serve our community and uh, we will do our best. And plus, let's face it, given the choice, would you go for Forte 5 or Forte? Okay, great. So Ray's asking Forte 5 or Forte. I'm a huge hatchback fan. I think that the Forte 5 hatchback gives you all the practicality of an SUV, but it doesn't, um, you don't lose any driving enjoyment. So this car, people forget that cars actually do handle very well. And Kia, when they redesigned the Stinger, they, um, they brought in some really uh, good people. Uh, Albert Bierman is uh, one of the top uh, former German designers, handled the BMW M division for years. He is now bringing handling to our cars. So for me, the GT is the car I would go with and the hatchback because it gives me all the practicality. Like I said, it's about 26 and a half. I'm, I'm guesstimating a little bit. It's, tw it's over 26 cubic feet of cargo space in the Seltos. It's also over 26 cubic feet of cargo space in this car. So you get that car handling, you get a little bit more power than the Seltos, and you get almost the same size trunk. So great question there on uh, what I choose Forte or Forte 5. And that, I think, is where we're gonna leave it for today. I will be back tomorrow. We're gonna do something at two o'clock tomorrow. So let me know in the comments below when this video is done being live and it's posted, what vehicle you like to see. I will consider those. I have a few ideas I may wanna to do tomorrow, but we're gonna do a bunch more of these. So let me know what you think. Should we do more of these? If we do, if we should, give me a thumbs up. Hey, we're trying our best in these trying times. And uh, thank you everybody for watching. I appreciate all of you. And like I said, if you wanna do business with us, we are open and we will be happy to help you.
just give us a call first, 509-304-6542, or visit our website, www.brantfordkia.ca. If you have any questions, my Instagram is at the end. Uh, you can even contact me directly through Instagram, email, whatever way you want. I will answer your questions about what we're doing in the tough times. Our website's got a lot of information as well. Thanks, everybody, for watching. Have a lovely afternoon. We will be back at this tomorrow.